My name is Patricia Chica. I'm a director producer and I'm based in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. I got interested in filmmaking at a very early age. I was uh, 16 years old when I had to uh, decide what I wanted to do in life. And uh, at the high school where I was uh, studying, they had a video camera and I just picked it up and shot my first kind of mini documentary and got hooked into filmmaking and then I decided to go to college and university to study for five years filmmaking. After my studies I went to Paris France to do an internship with a producer director in Paris at the production company and uh, came back to Montreal and did another internship at the National Film Board of Canada to learn how to direct documentaries. So in Paris I got the knowledge of uh, filmmaking for fiction and drama and in, at the National Film Board of Canada I got the knowledge for documentaries so I constantly juggled between the two uh, styles documentary and fiction and I love it. I'm currently working on a few projects. Uh, I'm shooting a new film uh, in about a week. It's a psychological horror genre short about the myth of Medusa. And uh, that will lead me to direct a feature film, my first uh, dramatic feature. And it should uh, be done uh, very quickly in a few months. I've been directing shorts uh, for many years now since I was a student and short films are a good way to get a noticed in the festival circuit. It's a calling card. I've experimented a lot like each short that I do is different uh, from the previous one because I'm trying to explore new genres, new styles, new ways of telling a story. Uh, my short films have been recognized internationally and uh, had gotten me to win over 30 awards. So that is leading to my first feature. And it's a great way, you know, to learn the craft, to discover your style and your voice as a filmmaker when you do short films. And I just love telling stories. So whenever there's an opportunity for me to direct a film, whether it be a short, a medium or a long format, film I just want to keep filming I want to keep shooting I want to be on a set somewhere I want to be in an edit suite somewhere because that's how you grow as an artist is by doing it it's by gaining the experience when I got out of school I made a short called La Promesse the promise that won at the Rhode Island International Film Festival that short film really opened up my career as a filmmaker and as I was traveling the festival circuit that year to promote that first short film, a producer in television contacted me and said, we're looking for uh, DV shooters. We're looking for directors who can also shoot. And because I've always grown with the camera in my hand and I'm a very experienced uh, shooter, uh, I got the job to travel the world to film for a mainstream uh, television, network television. So one thing led to another, one series led to another, and for uh, many years I was uh, gain, uh, earning my living working in television to the point where I, I became really, really good at it, and my name was known in that field that I was recruited by a production company in New York City, so I had to move from Canada to the United States to work for a reality-based documentary series shot in Europe and I became a director producer in television earning a lot of money but uh, being unfulfilled artistically because I was working for others and I didn't have the final cut I was just delivering a product and I had the opportunity to come back to Canada after earning a license of, like my one of my ideas got pre-sold to two networks, Bravo Network and Canal D in Canada. And I came back to make that first feature documentary called Rockabilly 514. 
and I stayed in Canada and I decided to concentrate myself to what I love the most which is storytelling and telling my own stories and having my final cut and becoming an independent filmmaker I mean my salary my earnings per year have dropped dramatically like I'm not earning a living making shorts anymore but I'm so fulfilled and so happy this is what I love to do and I know that all those efforts and sacrifices are going to bring me back into something that will be very lucrative and it's starting to manifest itself now with the offer that I got to direct a feature film. I start thinking about promotion, distribution and marketing of my films at a very early stage even during the writing process. You have to really be aware that the world we live in right now, it's all about being self-efficient, to be proactive and to know how to market yourself and build your own audience. We now have the tools that we didn't have 15 years ago. We have um, uh, different platforms, multi-screen platforms. We have the internet, we have social media. All of those outlets allow us filmmakers to reach out to our target audience directly. You don't need that middle person anymore like we used to uh, have before. Uh, you can self-distribute your content if you know how to do it, but you really have to get good at it and interested by investing time and energy into it and thinking about the whole concept from the writing process, pre-production, production, production post-production leading to the promotion and distribution because everything is knit together. For example, you can start writing a screenplay and already on social media start talking about your idea without revealing too much. You don't want to spoil the punch at the end, but you can start involving your audience on social media asking advice. Uh, what if I call my character like this? What do you think of this scene? Would you like to read my screenplay and comment on it? So you can really start by using social media to uh, engage your audience at the very early stage of the making of the film. And on each step, like pre-production, production, you can generate a buzz around your film by putting online content and sharing stories or behind the scenes material or uh, mini documentaries or interviews with the actors or interviews with the experts in your film or you, you can also blog about it, you can talk about it and start engaging the audience, make them uh, anticipate your film. So when the film comes out, people know about it, they have heard about it, they are expecting to see it. And you don't have to start from scratch when the film is finished. It, that work was done throughout the whole process and people are just wanting to sit in front of uh, the screen and watch your film. What I like about storytelling is that it's a never-ending process. It doesn't stop when the film is over. Because you as an artist, you're telling the story of your life through your work. So when I use social media to communicate with my audience I'm telling them a story that is related to my film but for example for Ceramic Tango I created a short dramatic film that has a self-contained story but to me it wasn't enough not in the year 2013 not in our era we're young we're proactive we're very creative we're multi-layered artists so to me it wasn't enough to have just done a single short film with a self-contained story I needed to go further so I created some other uh, content that is complementary to my short so I created a documentary called let it out that shows the process of how I train two non-actors to play in this film so when people watch the two together one after the other they have a sense of having experienced the film even further than the film itself. But I go even further than that in my process. I would create a burlesque show, a, a stage show with my actors involving the theme of the film, which is HIV. 
to bring awareness to the film, but bring awareness to the subject matter and to the cause that I'm trying to support. So by creating this stage show, I'm also creating another layer of, of, of storytelling that is related to ceramic tango. And then I create content when I travel to film festivals. I would document the journey of being a traveling filmmaker with my actors to various events around the world. So the experience continues beyond the screen. I'm somebody who loves to push the limits, not only in my work, but in, in my personal life as well. So my films are a reflection of who I am as a person, as a woman, as an artist. Uh, whatever I speak about in my films, I feel that I have experienced. So it's, it comes from a very authentic place and a very real intention. Of course, I don't have HIV, but I did research it enough to know how it feels to be an HIV person. Uh, that's the only thing I haven't really lived in my personal life, but everything else from uh, the subject matters that I decide to develop. I'm a very curious person by spirit and by nature, so I would go, whatever scares me, I will go and find out what it is about it that scares me so I can overcome that fear. And that's why I, right now I have a phase where I'm into the psychological horror because fear is something that I want to be able to control. And through my filmmaking, I, that allows me to do it. So that's why my style is so unique because even though I'm not a writer and I don't usually write the screenplays of my films, I team up with writers that have the same sensibilities and that we can collaborate together in the storytelling process. In order for me to um, really uh, put my stamp on my own films. It's a reflection of who I am as an artist, the things that interest me, the things that influence me and uh, it's very it tends to be edgy darker but there's always uh, a, an element of finding the light in the darkness one of the first film festivals that programmed my first short film la promesse the promise in english was the rhode island international film festival and this is how my career was started uh, thanks to the Rhode Island International Film Festival, I was able to get some kind of recognition within the filmmaking uh, world in order for me to uh, build up a career. So I really owe it to the RIF and Rhode Island to have put me on the map as a filmmaker when I was in my early 20s. And I will always cherish Rhode Island for that reason and I will always come back and give premiere status to this beautiful festival because uh, George T. Marshall and uh, Sean Quirk and their team, they do an amazing work programming high quality content. And I've never seen such a high level of quality in one single program than what I've seen at the Rhode Island, Rhode Island Film Festival. And I also know that they nurture talent. talent. They believe that if they keep nurturing those talents, they will grow as much as the festival keeps growing each year. And you know, it's a collaboration. A festival wouldn't exist without the filmmakers. And us filmmakers, we need festivals to showcase our work and get our film seen. So I will always be very loyal to the Rhode Island International Film Festival and always come back with a big heart, big smile. I feel almost like I'm already part of the family. I just want to say, never give up. It's not going to be an easy ride to be a filmmaker, but you can do it if you really believe in it and always move on and always stay true to yourself because filmmaking is an art and it's a privilege and you have it on a silver plate. Just take that opportunity to grow, learn from it and make great films.